On this 2000 CK series pickup, we're going to install brake controller part number 39523 from Takancha. This is their power track brake controller. Now this factory tow package also applies to Chevy and GMC trucks as far back as I believe early 90s. I don't know down to 88 or not when this new bot, when this body style came out. In the beginner install, we'll work from the rear of the vehicle and work away forward. Uh, the tow package on this body style is all stored right here behind a bumper in this channel underneath the bed of a pickup truck. All you gotta do is cut this down and pull it out. There's a harness that you pull out and it's designed to be spliced on too. And also for a towing package for a brake controller and hot lead, it's actually ran inside the frame but doesn't come as that far back. And that's located in the frame on the driver's side. Normally this harness is pushed up all against the frame here and you really can't see it. You'll never, if you don't know where to look, you'll never find it. It's a lot easier to take down a spare tire, but since this has already been pulled out a little bit for a previous install, we'll just leave it alone and we'll just, as you can see, the wires that we need to use have already been exposed. This will be the hot lead going to the battery, and then this is the brake lead, and they both go up to the front of the vehicle. When we get to the front of the vehicle, we'll show you where they terminate at. But for now, we'll start with the rear of the vehicle and make our hookups here. This is what, what you'll get once you pull all the wire harnesses out. You get the blue and the orange wire for the brake controller and the hot lead. And invariably, they're just a hair too short to work with because eventually you'll have to replace the connector and you'll be too short of wire. So you might as well add a length of about a foot to it. That way you'll have enough room for future access. All the wires you need to splice into will be in this harness here for return signals, the running lights, and the brake lights. And our, our night, they do provide a nice ground wire too. So we'll go ahead and get this ready to install. We'll just cut the plastic away, strip the wires, and we'll be installing a seven pole connector. Okay, once you get the plastic off and tape, you end up with a little assembly like this. Basically all the wires are just kind of terminated in one area, just to keep them from corroding. But we'll need to use four, four of the five, the running lights, the ground wire, the right turn, and left turn. And then light green is actually your reverse light wire. That's optional, you can use it or not, depending on your trailer has it. We'll go ahead and install it and show you where it goes in the seven pole anyway. All right, just go over the color codes real fast. Uh, again, yellow is going to be left turn, green is going to be the right turn, this will be your ground wire, brown is going to be your running light circuit, and the light green, the light green will be your reverse light lead. Well, the two heavier wires here and we'll just add some extensions to them real fast. And since we didn't have any orange wire, we used a black wire. Black's a common color for a 12 volt power supply too, so that's why we used that. Okay, I'm just gonna re-thread these wires through the frame. And we'll leave these alone for now, and we'll go ahead and install our seven pole bracket and, and seven pole. For a bracket, we're just gonna mount it directly right to the bottom of the bumper. These year vehicles had a nice flat edge to install a bracket to. So we're just gonna put it right there and drill straight to it. All right, next what we're gonna do is disassemble our seven pole, run our wires inside, and make the connections. And by the way, we're using part number 18138. I take out these two screws, hopefully the insides will come out. And what we'll do is we'll throw the wires to the back side, out the front, and then make our connection. Sometimes it helps create a little lubricant to get the, the little uh, seal on there. Now we don't really need to shove it all the way that far, but we just need working room for now. And the wire ends, we'll put some little ring terminals on there, make it a little bit easier to attach to the screws inside. The light green wire, we're not going to use a ring terminal on because that actually goes in the center here, so we won't need one. All right, we'll start off our reverse lead, and that goes into the center of a seven pole. Again, that's just for reverse lights. And I'll show you the different wiring codes, what goes to what. 
because on seven poles it's not color for color hardly at all. We'll start with the easy ones, the ones that do match up. We're going to run blue to blue. Blue will be your brake lead, so that goes to blue on brakes on your seven pole. Okay, and then next we'll go to black. Even though we converted it from orange to black, it's going to be our hot lead. And so black on the seven pole will always be for a hot lead. So our constant 12 volts. We'll do our ground wire and white on the seven pole is ground also. So we'll do that one next. Okay, now we'll go to the ones that kind of change colors and functions. I think that to me an easy way to remember is just do the exact opposite of a color you're working with. Say for instance, brown is running lights on the circuit for, for running lights on the trailer and on the truck. However, it's going to be green for the seven pole function. So basically it's gonna be green to brown, brown to green, and yellow to red. There's our brown, our green wire. Okay, green lug, we'll go to brown wire. Okay, then we'll go to our brown lug, and that will be right turn for the seven pole, but it'll be green on our truck, and also it'll be green typically on the utility trailer. Okay, and lastly, we'll do our left turn, which will go to the red lug on our seven pole. Okay, and we'll just pull all our wires back through. Then we'll go ahead and reinstall our screws to hold it in place. Double check to make sure our screws are in place. Okay, and then you can run some electric, electric tape around it to seal up the rest. Now we got everything sealed up, we'll go ahead and just install in our bracket. Let's use the four screws, hold it in place. We'll run our excess wire back up behind here and zip tie it and keep it secured.